Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Westphalen. I'm a medical oncologist and molecular biologist by training. And it's my great pleasure to give this e-cancer talk in precision oncology with a focus on pan tumor therapeutics. These are my conflicts of interest, none of which have affected today's talk. So the concept of precision oncology really is through personalization of therapy to maximize the effect of cancer-directed therapies. Before, we would treat all cancer patients alike. Nowadays, based on biomarkers and comprehensive genomic or tumor profiling, we try to personalize, tailor therapy to the individual and thereby maximize our effect. So what we're really doing now is moving away from histology. I've shown you that we've done one size fits all. So every patient with lung, colorectal, liver, or ovarian cancer was essentially treated the same, merely based on the organ of origin and histology. And nowadays, we move to personalized treatment based on biomarkers, largely genomic biomarkers. The first drug to really show that a drug based on a biomarker can actually show efficacy across a broad spectrum of cancers was pembrolizumab in DMMR MSI cancers. In 2015, the first studies came out showing that patients with mismatch repair deficient cancers would have prolonged and deep responses to this immunotherapy. And later on, finally published in the Lancet Oncology in 2020, it was shown that across a wide range of pathologies, immunotherapy in DMMR cancers has long-lasting and meaningful effects for our patients. I want to share a personal experience in such a setting. This was a young patient with a DMMR pancreatic cancer who underwent um, therapy with pembrolizumab and had a huge response. You can see that the left side of the liver was essentially um, all metastatic disease. And after only three months of treatment, it looked as if we had done surgery, but in fact, it was just the immunotherapy being effective. But we're not limited to just DMMR and um, MSI cancers. We now have other drugs um, targeting very rare um, but histology agnostic markers such as NTRK. And you find NTRK fusions essentially in every cancer, but at a very, very low frequency. On the right-hand slide of the slide, you see that um, in all cancers, only 0.3% carry this TRK fusion. And then on the other hand, you have cancers that are defined by these TRK fusions, um, very rarely, um, but still uh, therapeutically highly relevant. So we have two drugs now in the market, larotractinib and entractinib. And as you can see on these waterfall plots across a wide range of um, histologies, deep and marked response are seen. And the beauty is, and this is data that was shown at this year's ASCO, for example, um, these are long lasting um, responses in uh, patients that have very limited other therapeutic options. So if you find patients with these rare alterations, it really makes a um, difference for them. And there are more and more drugs now coming same um, principle here, we're talking about rat fusions and rat mutations, more common than NTRK um, alterations. And again, we have a variety of drugs now um, targeting the rat pathway. So you see that histology agnostic targeting of uh, cancer is really coming of age. And this is, for example, a data on the rat inhibitor selpacatinib in patients with rat fusion positive solid tumors. And you can see that, um, again, across a wide range of um, malignancies, rat inhibitors, in this case, selpacatinib, have an effect regardless of the histology. And just very recently, on, and based on um, a number of uh, clinical trials, including the NCI match um, trial sub uh, protocol age, the combination of dabrafenib and trametinib was approved across 
um, all cancers, including color, excluding colorectal cancer, um, that carry a BRAF V600E mutation. And again, as you can see on the right hand slide, uh, right hand side of the slide, um, in the waterfall plot, um, responses across a broad spectrum of malignancies. So now another very, very effective treatment available for our patients. So is it going to stop here? No, in fact, um, there is data that by 2023, 2024, and then with less accuracy, if only um, a few of the trials that are actually in um, the recruitment phase right now, phase two and three trials based on biomarkers, are going to um, end up with an approval, we're really going to see a tsunami, a huge wave of new approvals. And a lot of these drugs are actually developed in an histology agnostic fashion. So the broadness of our therapeutic armamentarium is going to grow significantly in the coming years. I want to sum up here the lens of molecular insights and molecularly guided therapeutics is rapidly evolving. In recent years, strong driver alterations have been identified and can be targeted. Rare subgroups of cancer show remarkable responses to targeted treatments, such as NTRK and RET um, inhibitors. And I believe it's important to ensure access to these drugs quite early, but then collect data in a post-approval setting to understand the long-term efficacy and safety across cancers. And with this, I again thank eCancer for giving me the opportunity to present here today and wish you a very nice day. Thank you very much.